Today we're going to be dissecting the sheep's eyeball. Notice the sheep's eyeball contains a lot of fat around it, along with eyelids and eyelashes. So the first thing you have to do is to make sure that you don't cut into any structures, pretty much move the structures of fat, extraocular muscles, eyelids, and eyelashes to expose where the optic nerve is. Now, not all sheep's eyeball will contain this optic nerve. Some of them are trimmed shorter. This ha one happens to be a little bit longer. So using the pair of scissors from our dissecting kit, okay, the best way to do this is to pretty much cut superficially. Once you get into a structure, you can use the tip of the pair of scissor. You're going to insert, wiggle it around, and then open it up to spread the structures away from the eyeball and then you can cut. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same method, use the same method, and we're going to go ahead, we're going to spread the structures okay, away from the eyeball, and then we're going to trim away the fat, the eyelids, and whatnot. We're going to continue this until we come to a very, very clean eyeball. Now that we have removed all of the connective tissue, the extraocular muscles, and the fat from the ABA, you can identify the cornea, which under normal conditions should be translucent, but since it's been sitting in solution, it's kind of opaque now. The sclera, which is the water of the eye, and the optic nerve, or cranial nerve number two. I'm gonna place the eyeball up against my thumb and my index finger and I'm going to hold it still against the dissecting tray. Using the scalpel, I'm going to make an incision and then I'm going to use my pair of scissors to trim around the eyeball. So gently make an incision with the tip of the scalpel and you're going to notice there's a lot of fluids oozing from the eyeball. That fluid is nothing more than the fluid that was preserving the eyeball as well as some of the fluids which are normally found within the chambers of the eye. So cutting along the coronal plane of the eyeball, okay, I'm going to split the eyeball into two halves an anterior half and a posterior half. Now I have the eyeball in twos. Here's the anterior half and here's the posterior half. I'm going to start with the anterior half of the eyeball and if you notice this gelatinous mass is nothing more than the vitreous humor which is located within the vitreous chamber. Now this vitreous humor pretty much gives the eyeball its shape along with the actual connective tissue that forms the eyeball. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the lens. Here's the lens. Under normal condition, the lens should be translucent, but since it's been sitting in solution, it is slightly opaque and it is now rubbery and hard. And if I look into the center of the eye, notice there's an opening known as the pupil. And if I scrape more of the vitreous humor off, I can actually see little structures right there that radiates behind the iris along with the eyeball. And these are your, all your ciliary muscles. Posterior aspect of the eyeball, I can actually see the retina. There it is, this thin sheet. Okay. And underneath the retina, I can actually see the tapetum lucidum. The tapetum lucidum is this highly reflective layer that pretty much gives your nocturnal animals an advantage in the dark. Now, as you shine a light in your cat's eye, for example, and it comes back with that reflective sheen, it is this tapetum lucidum that causes that. 
In humans, we don't have this layer. 